All right, hey guys, uh, back with a video on uh, what's going on recently in the gaming world. Uh, I wanted to do this video for a really, really long time. There's been so much news coming out lately on the PS5 as well as the Xbox Series X, and I wanted to do a video on just everything. Um, I wanted to break away from the D-pad discourse format because I just want to talk about so much stuff and I won't be able to structure it well within the uh, typical D-pad discourse rundown that I usually do for those videos. So I just want to just make this video as if I'm having a conversation with you guys and you're sitting at a table with me and we're just talking about everything that's going on. You know, this video will probably be kind of long, so just be prepared for that. And, um, you know, again, if you want to listen to just me talking, you know, you don't want the video, I would recommend, you know, putting this video in a lower resolution and just, you know, putting headphones on as if this is a podcast. So, you know, let's get right into it. Um, I'm gonna start with the Xbox Series X. Uh, I was really, really surprised that they, uh, well, I should say that Microsoft revealed the Xbox Series X during the Game Awards. You know, I was not expecting that at all. And it just came as a really, really big surprise uh, to me. So to see it at the Game Awards, let me know that Microsoft was willing to do some really creative th things in order to get people excited for the next generation of gaming. And I do feel that they have to kind of do that, you know, to, to keep people surprised more because um, Xbox has had a pretty rough gen uh, this past uh, generation, especially during the first half of the generation, you know, they, they struggled a lot but things became better for them, I would say around 2015 and after that, especially alongside the Xbox One X, because that was when they were really uh, getting into compatibility as well as uh, Game Pass. And both uh, backwards compatibility as well as Game Pass have been improving over the years. And now, you know, though those features are becoming reasons as to why people really want to get the next Xbox. So they did a really good job at really improving those uh, two things over the course of these past uh, three to four years or so. So anyway, uh, Xbox Series X, that still feels uh, weird for me to say. Uh, I was surprised by the name and I'm also, uh, I was also surprised by just the look of the console. I was expecting like a normal looking flat console, but it has honestly grown on me a bit. You know, I still think that the design is weird, but knowing that it's designed that way due to everything that's inside of the system is, you know, a pretty big deal and is a, a compromise because it's like, okay, you had to make the system this way in order to fit everything that's inside it in a good way to make everything be a cool down when people play it. And I, you know, appreciate that. So if that's the only way that they could have been able to do it, then go ahead and do it. You know, it's just gonna be a really unique looking console when people put it in their setups because again it's, it's 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 pretty wide and then also you know it's obviously was designed to be set up vertically you know if you put it horizontal then it just looks it's just going to look really really goofy you know so hopefully you have enough room to put it the way that microsoft wants it to be uh, seen in people's setups um but on top of that uh more details that came out about the xbox series x after that uh game awards uh, reveal um, a lot has been said about the solid state drive and how that will help improve games. Um, as we all know, the graphics for next gen games will be obviously better, but something that a lot of people want when they play console games is that speed, the amount of speed uh, in order to just go into games as if you're going into a, an app on your phone and what the solid state drive will do on the Xbox Series X as well as the PS5 is have gamers be able to jump into games instantly and that's going to be great it's going to uh, seemingly take things back to the way they were during the uh 8 bit and 16 bit days when as soon as you put the cartridge in you were able to get right into the game and that's something i've been wanting for years um you know uh, these games take a long time to get into especially when you have to download updates so if th if these new consoles can make that experience of getting into the game and playing the game very streamlined and, and very quick, then I'm all for it. And to be honest, that would probably be a bigger jump for me than the graphics because I have a PS4 Pro as well as the Xbox One X. So I'm already playing games at 4K. But um, again, if you could make that experience of me playing those games even better and, and faster, then I'm all for it. 
And uh, speaking of resolution, you know, they, they, both systems are obviously aiming for 4K for the vast majority of their games, but they're also doing this alongside uh, increased frame rate of 60 frames per second. So that will also be a, a big deal. Um, there are 4K 60 frames per second games on the PS4 Pro, but a lot of those games are more uh, sports and racing games. I want to see that target being hit for the really big open world games and it seems as if that will be the case on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X so I'm really really pumped for that. Now something else that will be big on these two systems is uh, compatibility and more so for Xbox. Um, you know uh, the games that people play on their PS4 and Xbox One will be playable on the successors to those two systems. But Xbox, or I should say Microsoft, has confirmed that you'll be able to bring your accessories with you. So all your Xbox One controllers will be able to be played on the Xbox Series X. And that, to me, is a really great thing because it saves you money, you know, money I could use for games to play on these new systems. And I, I really like uh, the Xbox controller. Um, this is the Xbox Elite 2 controller, and it's a really, really good controller. I've been playing it uh, ever since I got it back in, I believe, October, and I've charged it, had to charge it only twice uh, so far, and just the way it feels, it, it's it's a great controller. It feels very, very premium, far more premium than the first Elite controller, and it's a really big improvement. So being able to bring this with me to the next Xbox is a good thing, and for other people that have, you know, original Xbox One controllers, um, they'll be able to take those with them to the Xbox Series X. And that's a good thing because a lot of people really don't play co-op games in their houses anymore. You know, everything's online. So for those rare occasions in which you, you have your friends over, you know, you don't have to worry about them bringing their controllers over or you saying, oh, okay, let me buy these controllers so that my friends can play. You know, you'll be able to just take the controllers that you already bought, already had was Xbox One and use them for the Xbox Series X. Now, uh, for the PS4, on the other hand, I, well, nothing has, at least um, based on what I've read so far, nothing has really been said on whether or not people will be able to use their PS4 controllers on the PS5, but as of right now, I don't think they will because the uh, PS5 controller, the DualSense, is very, very different from the DualShock 4. And I'm grateful for that because I really did not like the, uh, well, I, I shouldn't say I didn't like the DualShock 4. It's just that I, I definitely felt that it was the worst controller between uh, Nintendo, Xbox, and uh, Play PlayStation. Um, I felt that this controller was definitely the worst controller out of the three uh, due to the poor battery life as well as just the fact that there, it doesn't really uh, have that much weight to it and it doesn't really fit into my hands well, you know, because it's kind of hollow and the sticks are kind of slim. So for the DualSense, what Sony did was make the shape of the controller uh, more similar to Xbox so that it fits really snugly into your hands. And you know, you, you do have uh, features that are more um, PlayStation oriented. You still have the analog stick positions being next to each other and you do have the same uh, face buttons. Uh, something that I felt was interesting about the face button though, the, excuse me, face buttons though, is that the face buttons aren't colored anymore. And I don't know what the reasoning was behind that. You know, I mean, it had to be design reasons for it, but when you look at everything in tech now and how everything is going for accessibility, you know, you would think that they would still have those colors for the new gamers trying to learn the controls for games. But, you know, we'll, we'll see in terms of how people respond to that, you know, because that, that definitely is a change. You know, I've been playing on uh, Sony PlayStation consoles for 25 years and the face buttons are always, you know, colored. So to have that change now on, on a default controller is, is kind of weird. And, you know, I personally feel that for accessibility reasons that they should have kept the colored face buttons. But again, we'll, we'll see how other people respond to that. You know, I'm personally fine with whatever color they use for the buttons because I'm used to where the buttons are. But again, for, for new gamers, I, I think that that would have been nice or better to just keep the colors on the face buttons. Um, the, the style of the controller itself, you know, is, is really weird. It's two-tone, and I, I still don't like it. I'd rather have the controller be all black. But again, you know, that that's not really 
that important for controllers? I mean, it is important because if it wasn't important at all, then you wouldn't have design teams making designs for these controllers and going through different designs to decide which one to make as a default, you know? So it's, it obviously is important, but it's not the main thing that you care about on a controller. You care about the way it feels in your hand and, and if it plays uh, games well. And it seems that that will be the case, you know, especially since this controller seems like a really big improvement over the DualShock 4 that many people had complaints on. So that's gonna be a really good thing. Um, I'm really um, interested to see how I how I will feel about the Dual DualSense controller for the PS5. You know, I've been wanting uh, a better controller for the PlayStation for, for many years now. So it seems like they, they finally listened to uh, a lot of people that have the same opinion that I do about the Dual uh, Shock 4 and they'll be making uh, really big improvements with the DualSense controller. So that was something that was just, uh, uh, you could say unveiled uh, just a couple days ago, the, the DualSense controller. So with all this news, you know, it definitely feels as if, you know, these consoles are coming this year. And that's been another topic that people have been trying to determine, you know, whether or not the consoles are coming this year due to everything that's going on in the world right now. Uh, not to go you know too deeply into that but it does have an impact on pretty much everything that uh, people do so um we'll, we'll see what happens in terms of that you know i could see it going either way as of right now especially with the way that sony has been talking about the ps5 it does seem that they are very set on releasing the ps5 this year and the same is true for microsoft you know based on what they're saying it seems that they're really set on releasing the xbox series x this year but again Anything can happen, you know, things can change just in an instant. And we saw that in the month of March, you know, the beginning of March was very different from the ending of March, at least here in the United States. So again, we'll just have to see what happens, but I, I can see it going either way, you know, so just be prepared for anything. Um, and in terms of the game industry and the effects that what's that, um, you know, the COVID-19 has had on the gaming industry, we are, we've already seen it with game delays, you know, um, biggest one so far has been uh, The Last of Us 2, you know, that game was going to come out to the PS4 and now it's been delayed indefinitely uh, because of them wanting to determine the best way to roll out the physical copies of the game. And again, this game is going to sell well all over the world. So if it's going to sell all over the world, they want to make sure that the game will sell well in parts of the world in which it's not really ideal to be able to download the game due to poor internet you know they want people to be able to buy the game at a retail store to be able to play the game and experience the sequel to what many people felt was the best ps3 game of all time so i definitely get the reason as to why they delayed it it was still shocking to see that though because it's like man you know this was going to be the ps4 swan song and now it's looking as if this game could be tied to the ps4 in terms of it being kind of like a cross-gen experience. And again, they were probably already working on the PS5 update for the game, but based on the timing of this delay, at this point, I just say, you know, you might as well market the game alongside the PS5 and hold it off for the PS5 launch. And then during the PS5 launch, have people experience that game on the PS5 to be able to see just how much better the PS5 is, because a game like that will definitely be a reason as to why people will go over the P to the PS5 even though the game is still on the PS4, you know. It's just a really, really big game that has a lot of hype. So when you put that hype on top of the uh, PS5, then that will make for a really, really good launch in my opinion, as long as the game is really good. And based on, you know, what people are saying, at least so far, it seems that the game will do just as well as the original did on the PS3. So. Again, we'll, we'll see what happens with that, but um, that will be, a, a, to me, a good, a good strategy to just have it be tied to the PS5 with a PS5 update, especially since, I mean, that's what Xbox is doing with Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite will be on the Xbox Series X, and it will be a game that will be advertised alongside the Xbox Series X, but people will still, still be able to play Halo Infinite on their Xbox One consoles, and I think that this is a really smart idea because when you think of a, a multiplayer game of that size, you want as many people to, as you can to play it, especially if you're trying to do beta tests before the game launches. Um, if Halo Infinite 
had many issues with multiplayer uh, during the launch of the Xbox Series X. And that will not only look bad on the game itself, but it'll also look bad on the Xbox Series X. You know, that will bring a lot of bad PR to the Xbox brand, brand as a whole. So I, I do feel that making the game still be playable on Xbox One is smart to test the game out to make sure that everything's working so that in time for the Xbox Series X launch, people will you know be able to play it and get into it instantly and not have any issues. And you know, there are some people that feel that, you know, uh, the game being on the Xbox Series X as well as the Xbox One consoles holds the game back. But again, as long as the game is good, then I don't think that would really matter. You know, the game is gonna look amazing on the Xbox Series X due to the system's power, and that will be enough for many people when they uh, finally play the game and see the game on the Xbox Series X. And also on top of that, for a, a multiplayer game, you want as many people to play it as possible. And if you only lock that game to the Xbox Series X, then you're not gonna have that many people being able to play it. And Halo really needs a really big launch in order to bring the series back to the way it was because Halo 5 was a very, very uh, poor Halo in my opinion, uh, mainly due to single player campaign. The single player campaign was a mess. So they really need to do something in order to make Halo come back to the way it was back during the early to mid 2000s. And I think that a big launch on two Xbox systems will at least get the, the, the launch hype to that level because anybody with an Xbox, with a modern Xbox, will be able to play the game, you know, whether or not they have the money for the Xbox Series X. And I think that's a, a good thing, you know, so this is going to be a really big launch. And that's outside of the fact that people that play games on their PC will be able to play uh, Halo Infinite 2. So it's, it's going to be a really exciting launch for Halo, the, the first, you know, really exciting launch for Halo in many years. And I'm looking forward to seeing how things uh, turn out for, for Halo as well as the Xbox brand as a whole as they try to bring Halo back to the way it was uh, back when I was a teenager in high school and Halo 3 was the big game that everybody played uh, back then. So again, this is a exciting time to be a gamer. There's a lot going on. Uh, Nintendo is doing well. Uh, there's been rumors that Nintendo will re-release all the 3D Mario games. So Mario Galaxies, uh, Mario Sunshine, as well as the remaster of Super Mario 64 is apparently gonna come to the Switch very, very soon. There's been a lot of rumors of that. And to be honest, I think <laughs> if, if Nintendo does that this year, then they're, they're set. I mean, they could just do that in terms of exclusive games and they'll be set because that will be enough for them. Um, the Switch is just doing so well. And I love the system so much due to its style. Um, again, I'm gonna make a video about the Nintendo Switch and why I like it in a future episode of the D-Pad that will be coming really, really soon. I just need you know time to finish it up, but I really wanna do that video because I love the system so much and it's my favorite Nintendo system since the Super Nintendo. So um, again, I, I, I just love all the success of the, the, the Nintendo Switch because it's just such a, a great system and being able to take your games with you and then being able to come back and play them on your TV, that's just great. And you know, it seems that gaming as a whole is gonna come to that ins instant point of you know being able to play your games instantly wherever you are because uh, Sony, as well as Xbox, you know, they're definitely gonna do some interesting things next gen for uh, streaming games. You know, um, Xbox is having betas for xCloud right now. And, and while I haven't been a part of the beta yet, other people have uh, tested it out and, they, and they, they've been pretty impressed with it. And, you know, just being able to play those games on the go on your phone with an Xbox controller will be pretty cool. Especially more so for games that are multiplayer, you know, pick up and play games like Rocket League or um, Halo, you know, games that you can just pop in and play for 30 minutes or so and be able to, you know, feel sat satisfied after multiple matches. You know, games like that will be perfect for X X Cloud. So it's going to be uh, really interesting to see how that grows uh, this decade. You know, it, it's it shouldn't be used as a, a main feature because I'm pretty sure that most people don't want to play games via streaming as you know the only way that they, they, that they could play games. And I think that uh, is also shown by just how Stadia has been doing, Google Stadia, you know, that, that, that had, you know, a decent amount of attention before it launched. And now it seems that a lot of people have just completely forgot about Google Stadia as they're getting uh, really focused in on the next uh, 
gen consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. So um, the fact that streaming will be just a bullet point or a side feature on the next gen consoles is the right way to go in my opinion because people mainly want to play games I feel on their TVs, but you know when they're out and and you know say at lunch break or just you know out with friends, they might want to just play a game real quick while they're you know doing something from away uh i should say away from their home so um just being able to have that option is good and it will make people more locked into the games and it will more likely provide more money to developers because people will support the games more due to them knowing that they'll be able to play the games from wherever they are whether they're in front of their tvs or away from home and they only have their uh, smartphone on them so it's gonna be a really interesting time to see how everything plays out. Um, I'm really excited. It seems that all three brands, Nintendo, uh, PlayStation, as well as Xbox, are going for their strengths. And all those strengths are gonna provide different experiences on each console. So you'll more than likely be fine if you just buy one console, especially due to so many games being multi-platform now. But there are definitely reasons as to why you know people should get all three consoles on the flip side of that and again just having that option and just just being able to say that as a gamer is is really exciting for me so again we'll, we'll see how things play out um in terms of price i personally feel that both the ps5 as well as the xbox series x will be at least 450 dollars but I'm, I'm, I, I will personally say 500 for both, you know, just, just to be on the safe side. And, you know, I, and I say that because I can't see how the system's gonna be higher than that. Because once you get higher than 500, that's like off. Okay, this is just too much for me. And I'm not, I'm not gonna get this. Especially in this time that we live in, which is, you know, just, just so crazy and wild. And a lot of people are unfortunately uh, losing their jobs due to everything that's going on. So a lot of people won't have money to support these consoles if the consoles are more than 500. So I do think that 500 is the good price for, for both consoles. And uh, another, I guess you could say, uh, side note too, is that Xbox is apparently gonna release another Xbox model, uh, Xbox Lock Lockhart, which is the uh, project name. You know, that's not the official name for the model, but this model will apparently be cheaper and have all the features of the Xbox Series X, but instead of games being 4K 60, there'll be 1080p at 60 frames. So the only difference will be the resolution will be worse. But there's so many people that have 1080p TVs, they don't have 4K TVs. So that system may be better for them as long as they're getting all those next gen features that are on the Xbox Series X in terms of uh, accessibility as well as being able to get into games faster. So that, that system could definitely do well with the right uh, demographic, especially demographic of say, you know, moms and fathers that want to buy a new console for their kids, you know. If their kid has a 1080p TV, then they're obviously going to go for the uh, Xbox Lockhart, Lockhart instead of the Xbox uh, Series X, especially if that Lockhart console is $200 less. So again, just, just having options in terms of where you want to play the games is really good. You know, they're not leaving people behind you know, in, in terms of uh, them being able to keep up with the latest games. And I think that's good because not everybody has the money to support being able to buy uh, new consoles every four to five years, you know. But at the same time, those same people want to keep up with the new games and new latest games. So just having an option is good. I mean, and it's amazing that a game like Halo Infinite will be able to be played on the original 2013 Xbox One. You know, some people kind of get kind of iffy just thinking about that fact but to me i think that's cool because again a lot of people can't afford the new xbox models so if they're able to play a new game on the xbox model then you know that's cool you know if they're gonna have fun with that then that's that's cool and again just just having them be able to be a part of the big launch of some of these games is is great and it, it's gonna make gaming more popular as these years go by so um, that's pretty much all I have to say about everything that's going on in gaming right now. It's a really exciting time as these new consoles are about to release and uh, we'll see how things play out. And um, again, I'm, I am planning to make uh, D-pad videos. I just haven't had the time to right now with everything that's going on. I've been you know, trying to help friends out as well as my family out. So I just haven't had the time to do it right now, but I 
definitely plan to get those videos out really, really soon. I got the review set up. I just have to add the video footage and edit the episodes out to uh, make them presentable to you guys so that you can finally watch them. And I will say that I'll probably go with the Netflix model. So I'll probably just dump a bunch of episodes all at once so that you guys can be able to access them whenever you want to. And um, from there, I'll, I'll just prepare for the next generation of consoles because I really want to reboot the D-pad so that the show just feels new alongside the new console. So that's something I really want to do for this year. So again, be on the lookout for that. And again, I appreciate you guys uh, asking me questions about you know when you're gonna make a new video. I hope this video is kind of like a bridge between the previous videos I did as well as you know what's gonna come out in the future. So again, pump for next gen. Let's see how things go. Okay. So thanks again for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys uh, later. All right. Goodbye.